Today I'm here to talk about the third installment of the Scream franchise, Scream 3, which was originally the final installment um, of the franchise. It was always seen as a trilogy, essentially. Horror trilogy, uh, um, and the film. You know, this film has um, <clears throat> went through various stages during its production. You know, there is the, the second film. Of course, had to battle with leaks and such, and so they had to have fake stuff and certain things they intended, like who the killers were. And the second film changed a bit. Um, I didn't really go into that because you know, I think a lot of people know that. Um, who have seen the films and know about some stuff regarding the movie. Um, but this film, you know, was intended as the uh, final film. Um, and the f it's about, you know, the film is essentially, uh, there's another stab film being made, you know, the third stab film, Return to Woodsboro, you know, and presumably after the first stab they made a sequel, I doubt, uh, like the, uh, the original, like the, the, what happened in the second film, those events, and then essentially it seems like this installment of this stab, uh, universe is essentially, uh, you know, a fictitious uh, version as uh, the killer, essentially, uh, in the film is going around this time uh, killing people in the order of uh, the script. Like, who dies in the script, they die. And so, uh, that uh, is... Long and the short of it, the, old, the basic uh, synopsis for the film. Um, this film ha is more comedic than the previous two. I mean, of course, all of these movies do have a comedic bent to them, but there was also a serious tone. But, you know, the comedy and you know was thrown in here and there uh, in order to, you know... Uh, essentially uh, alleviate some of the darkness and the brutal killings. Um, and with this film, a lot of changes happened because the original script uh, for the film was to basically have Stu Mocker, Matthew Lillard from the first film, his character is alive, even though he got... Uh, Spoilers for that film again. Um, he <clears throat> got a TV, uh, you know, uh, on his head. You know, said he pushed a TV and it fell and electrocuted him. Um, and also, no doubt, uh, uh, crushed his head also. So you know, have some definite, you know. blunt force trauma to the head on top of being electrocuted but I'm sure that script at least I would hope so um, would probably explain how he's alive um, and him in prison and how he was essentially orchestrating this whole plot of uh, where there's people uh, killing for Stu you know and Ghostface uh, costumes and such, and then uh, uh, there's like a list of people to get killed, and by the end, you know, the last target was Sydney, and um, Matthew Little was actually contracted to do a, a third film. He got paid regardless, so in a way, no complete loss for him in the uh, payday department, but 
you know, Columbine happened, and so because like like high school students would be be targeted as all as well as Sydney and all these things, you know, killers in high school and stuff like that, you know, that obviously was not seen as a very good idea. And, you know, it, understandable. Um, though I do think there was some sort of, like, a promise in the idea of what we now have heard and can see bits and of information of the third screen film regarding this idea of, like, the Stu essentially does have, like, a cold that follows and essentially kills for him, you know, even if, let's say, he wasn't even, um, responding, though I, I believe he probably would be in some, uh, some way, um, especially since there were targets, but, you know, he could do that, but just, I guess, like, any, like, high school students and stuff involved, not involve those at all, just be like, just like adults or something, and, you know, be interesting for sure, um, and the whole thing was gonna be like this big meta thing, and like, uh, apparently like, and because it didn't happen, I have no problems saying this, but everybody who was apparently killed in the film wasn't actually dead, um, it was like this big meta thing. Uh, that apparently was going to wrap into the original film. They got, like, fame and f all that stuff. And it's, it's, it's interesting to really think about. And I think there are certain elements that could work, but maybe certain things would have to go or need to be changed at least, you know. Uh, but it would be interesting for sure had that film come about but you know Bob Weinstein wanted the film made and they uh, hired a new writer so this is the only film of the four films now that we have of that was not written by uh, Kevin Williamson written by Aaron Kruger um, and he uh, has written other films, like, um, I believe he's written some Transformer films, some stuff that isn't necessarily beloved, but, you know, he, uh, did what he could to try and make the characters talk and act like they would after the events of the first three films, um, but, yeah, um, <clears throat> so David Ke uh, Arquette, Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, and only time she's ever Courtney uh, Cox Arquette, because you know those two got married um, in 1999. Um, and it's because of Scream that they got together. And, you know they they had a child, but then they separated and divorced. But you know this time they're newly married, and uh, yeah, there's of course new characters in addition, and there's also. Uh, Leif Schreiber is in the very beginning as Cotton Weary. He and his girlfriend are killed uh, by Ghostface. Um, wants to know where Sydney is, and he has his own <clears throat> like talk show. Uh, Cotton Weary has his own co uh, talk show, and he's you know Hollywood, so Hollywood's a big thing in this film. Um, <clears throat> and. Uh, Yeah, uh, there's more stuff like with uh, Maureen Prescott and her background. We see Neil Prescott uh, for a scene. Um, and yeah, the, the the film as it is is all right. Um, the, you know, some of the kills and stuff is not all that uh, you know fantastic let's say, but, you know, there's, a, you know, directors and cast and actors and actresses are, uh, you know, <clears throat> struggling with the fact that the film is basically, you know, uh, not at all 
going on because of the death of Cotton Weary and how that seems to be like this out of a stab film and so you know and the director's worried like this is gonna hurt his career like <clears throat> the film itself won't um uh, be finished uh or if it is, it's not going to be how it's supposed to be. He goes, like, I want to just do, like, this, like, like, a, like, a serious, like, drama-type film and stuff. But they said I'd have to do a horror film. So I do that. So I'm going to do my horror film, and now this is happening. This sucks. And, of course, you know, the, you know, the cast is getting picked off one by one. You know, Jenna McCarthy's in it. Uh, Dion Richmond. Posey. Uh, Patrick Dempsey plays a detective in the film. Um, and we also get to see uh, Randy again. Uh, Jamie Kennedy uh, has a cameo, a special appearance. He, uh, you know, and the, the, of course, because of he was a beloved character and he was killed off in the second film, people. <clears throat> Even behind the scenes, regretted killing him off um, after the fact. Um, Wes Craven seems to take the uh, uh, the blame for it, even though I, I don't know if it's entirely really pinpointed that it was all his fault, or if it was like uh, like one of like Bob Weinstein wanted it to happen, or Kevin Williamson had it in the script, and so people were fine with how that went, regardless of whose decision it was. He Wes Craven took the brunt of it, the blunt of the responsibility, because, you know, he was the director and he had the final say if, uh, like, a, a character gets killed or not. And, uh, they killed off Randy, and, uh, they wanted to bring him back. And so they had Randy essentially within the uh, world of the of Scream 2. He filmed, uh, something regardless like uh, if there's ever another set of killings in Sydney and Dewey and Gale and are involved basically the rules of a trilogy and how like you know things uh, are revealed in the final installment of a trilogy that it turned out were like in the original film wasn't necessarily true like Return of the Jedi Godfather 3 Things are revealed in the last film that, you know, we didn't know and perhaps couldn't know about. And so, uh, all these things uh, <clears throat> are coming together and, you know, um, Maureen Prescott uh, uh, had a stage name and was an actress in some horror films from the producer who doing the stab films and then you know, as time went on like um, like she got pregnant and then had her baby and then you know she uh <clears throat> you know uh, went back to Woodsboro and met Neil Prescott and married him and had Sydney and there you go. Um, and as the film goes on, we find out who exactly the killer is. And, um, of course, so it's, you know, Roman, the director. He was, uh, her, uh, son that she gave up when she became pregnant because she gave him up because, you know, that was a dark, reminds her of a dark period in her life. And, or wanted to forget about that and so she says like you know oh your mother's dead you know like like she died the night she went to a Hollywood party and you know uh, you know it was essentially like you know, raped and was pregnant and so when that happened that she gave birth that was essentially the death of her alias, and then she just went back to her life. Um, <clears throat> I find pictures of her 
and they pinpoint all who all these characters who these what all happened and where they were um with the help of carrie fisher uh, uh, who plays a character who works at the studio who said so she was up for uh princess leia and she was this close but the one who gets to be princess leia is the one who sleeps with george lucas sort of like a a joke or a jab also at the whole hollywood sort of uh stereotypical uh way of like of casting couches like how you know for an actress to get ahead you have to sleep with like a producer or director or whoever you know which as we've known over the last so many years that was still a thing going on not that i didn't believe it wasn't but you know you didn't hear about it as much but you know that is uh something that is mentioned in this film um the whole last part of the film takes place at the uh producer's uh Head of the studio who's producing the staff films, like a mansion and uh, Roman and the other cast members are there. And uh, yeah, they uh, get killed off one by one, except for, you know, of course, the main trio, they get to live. Um, <clears throat> Sydney finds out uh, more about her mother, and now also Roman was the one who gave the uh, idea to Billy, uh, filming like Cotton Weary from a long distance with Marine and Cotton in a hotel room, and then filmed uh, Billy's dad with Marine, and then how you know like assume, uh, assuming that things went this way. Uh, Mrs. Loomis found out about the affair, <clears throat> left uh, his dad, Billy's distraught over his mom leaving, and then he is shown a tape of uh, exactly what happened and how Marine Prescott, uh, you know, had an affair with uh, his girlfriend's mom and so you know that's not that didn't really sit well with him and he apparently Roman gave him pointers like you know how to do ex uh, how to go about killing her how to frame somebody in this case cotton and also make sure you know you know uh, you have a partner on the off chance things go wrong, you have a partner to blame. In this case, it'd be Stu. You know, Stu was there, and we also hear their voices. You know, Billy and uh, Stu's voices. You know, as she's walking around the stab set, and how you know there's recreation of Stu's house, and then Sydney's house, and going around and bedroom on the set, and how. Um, memories and you know just remembering uh, her and Billy and then later Billy and Stu when they reveal themselves to be the killers of the first film and you know there are definitely um, uh, some callbacks of course to the first film um it's one of those where the trilogy sort of tries to sort of like come full circle in some way um and yeah uh, this film uh you know because kevin williamson his script wasn't uh they didn't go ahead with it as well as they didn't wait for him to be available because he was also like uh doing like some other films and also i believe uh dawson's creek was going on at the time so he's that was his show. He was doing 
that, so he was doing a few things, and he was producer of this film, uh, and gets credit for creating the characters, but he, uh, yeah, his lack of involvement in the film in the writing department, I think, is felt. Um, we don't get to, uh, hear all the dialogue and stuff, but, you know, that he would have written, um, and for the longest time, you know, and I guess this is still even true to now, uh, it's not my favorite Scream film, but I still think it's a fine film. Um, understanding the various things before they even got to film the movie, like from things like Columbine, may, uh, having it to where they change things, shift gears, get a new writer, write a different script, and then from there, you know, you just do what you can um, and make it as uh, best way you can and also Neff Campbell wasn't in the film as much as uh, she could have been due to other commitments also so they had a certain window and as a result of that they had to rewrite like, scenes with the character and make sure things aligned so she could be there. Um, also, this film is the only time where actually Dewey gets to uh, kill the killer. Um, you know, uh, he has a bulletproof vest on, and also Sydney does too <laughs> at the end. Both get shot at, and uh, Roman gets stabbed with a nice pick in the neck and then in the chest. And they both had bulletproof vests on. He, of course, you know, as Randy said, and also in the, earlier in the film with his cameo, the third installment, like the villain is like a this, like a some sort of super villain, and now you gotta like basically freeze their head and then blow it up and just do whatever to just kill them because they're gonna be like superhuman. But you know, she's like, oh, he wasn't superhuman, and as they begin to turn and go back is also you know Patrick Dempsey the detective he's there and he uh is gonna help but then he got uh, knocked out uh, by a Roman and then found like a you know uh, had another little gun because he gave Dewey his gun and after one point he was hurt but then He was fine enough to continue looking to where Sydney was, and they found like a old uh, screening room where basically like the final act took place, and all this footage of Maureen and the various like men she was with in a hotel room was revealed. And yeah, uh, yeah, there's all this stuff going on that you know. It's kind of interesting to see how it all wrapped up, um, but still, you know, given the production and also how there was a totally different story and script initially, you just kind of wonder what would have happened if they didn't go ahead and make this uh, film the way they did. Well, if they waited for Kevin Williamson to be available like after some time, maybe wait a few months and then maybe if there was a way to salvage his original idea he could have changed certain things to make people comfortable and fine and you know who knows um but yeah yeah you know, it's one of those things where uh you know you can't really change what happened um it's just one of those what if scenarios where what if we got to see the original Scream 3? Um, of course, it also was like, you know, what if oh, Columbine didn't happen? What if this and that happened? We won't know. Um, but it's interesting to discuss for sure. Um, and again, this isn't my favorite installment of the franchise. Um, but it is good as um, as years have gone on and I've rewatched it. 
um, I found uh, uh, it's grown on me more, uh, which I like. You know, it may never be my favorite uh, film in the franchise. I think that will always be the original Scream. But the fact that, that as time goes on, it grows on me more and more, you know, even with entertainment value, uh, particularly, you know, uh, that's, uh, you know, that's something that's, that's good, I think. Um, yeah, this is a interesting film for sure, you know, more comedic, but, um, it's a film that is, I think is worth watching if you were watching these films. Again, this, this was actually my first trilogy of films, you know, these, uh, Three were the first films I ever saw of a horror franchise from beginning to end. Because um, I had them on VHS. And um, got them on DVD a little later. I've loved them ever since. And um, of course I have the <laughs> Blu-rays here. And... Um, Blu-rays is excellent, too. Um, of course, I've talked about this a little bit, you know. Still Screaming and Scream, the inside story, these behind-the-scenes documentaries that have come with uh, the, this set. Um, yeah, it's just... Scream 3 is really good. It's a fun film. You know, not the best, but it's fun. And also... Seeing them at like 12, 13, um, my first franchise from beginning to end, like horror franchise, slasher in particular, it was, it was fun, you know, it was fun. I had seen enough of many of the films they were referencing, like some of the early Friday the 13th and Halloween and Nightmare on Elm Street and that sort of stuff that I was familiar enough to where things weren't really spoiled for me, so, you know, that's a... That's fortunate for me, though some others may that some stuff might get spoiled. Um, but I think this is a film, a horror franchise that many people can enjoy. You know, they, um, you know, if straight up slasher films aren't their thing, these three films um, have a decent amount of humor in them. And there's also like a murder mystery, like who done it. Uh, on top of just the typical stuff you'd see in a slasher film. Um, so, these movies are really something. They're all very good. And, um, and I enjoy rewatching them, and it's been fun to rewatch these for these videos. Um, and yeah, that's really all I've got now uh, for today. Um, so,. Until next time, um, I hope all of you will have a great day, great weekend, great week, and I'll see you all later. Bye.